Hi everybody, it's Wednesday, October 17th, and it's time for another flea market find series. This is going to be one of the last ones of the year, um, because we've only got one more flea market coming up, and uh, that's going to be at the uh, first week in November, and then uh, we go through quite a dry spell. So anyways, uh, I've got a couple of items here from a yard sale buy up in Maine uh, several weeks ago that I totally forgot about and actually ended up finding these items <laughs> tucked under the seat <laughs> in the truck. Uh, so we get those out of the way and then uh, we're going to take a look at uh, some items I picked up uh, about a week ago at a uh, flea market uh, swap meet down in Connecticut. So I'm going to reposition the camera and let's dive right in. So I was coming back home uh, from Maine and it was uh, early in the morning and I uh, saw a woman hanging out signs for yard sale and just for the heck of it I, I asked her I said hey do you have any tools and she says oh yeah tons the guy did have quite a few tools uh, but there was nothing I could really use there was a lot of yard tools gardening tools carpentry tools and stuff I couldn't use and then I came across uh, these uh, two drill indexes and then this box of drills here and I took a quick look and was mildly interested in them. And, and then I thought to myself, I have so many drills, is it really worth it? So I was contemplating whether or not I even wanted to bother um, finding out how much he wanted for these. And uh, he said to me, he said, ah, he said, yeah, he said, uh, if you want those, uh, how about a buck a piece? So I paid $3 for these <laughs> three containers here. This is actually a uh, automatic drill index by Anderson. It looks like Anderson Tools and Machine Incorporated of New York. And it's not complete, but let's give you an example. Take out this big one here. So like that one right there is marked ATM USA. So ATM is automatic tool machine. So that's actually the uh, the brand of drills that are in this folder. And then, you know, I'm not familiar. I've never heard of that name. But they're US made drills. So can't be all that bad. You know, that one looks like it's never been used. Let's see if that's just for the heck of it. I mean, I'm not going to check every one of these. I just, yeah, that's an ATM also. So that's, you know, there's a few decent drill bits in there. There's one, two, three, four, the stubby one. This side's almost empty, and it looks like there's some, some different colored ones in there. So that's kind of a mishmash. All right, but I mean, for a, for a buck, this one is a Hewitt or Huat or whatever the heck, H-U-O-T. I still haven't decided how to say that. Uh, let's see what's in here. Oh, this is going to be mismatched of drills too by the looks of it. It's a, kind of like a stubbier one there. I don't think that's been sharpened down to that size. I think that started its life in that size. That looks like it's spun in a chuck at some point. And the line where that happened is right over where the... Uh, manufacturer was. It's a 29 HS. That's what that said. So that's probably just HS for high speed. USA. So we're probably not going to ever really find out who made these drills. And there's a few in there. So that. Yeah, you know. And the case has got rust issues and paint issues but again it was only a buck so who cares and then I got this this is an old file card index in case you don't know what that's that box is for and it has oh look at that brand new triumph brand industrial grade made made in the USA dollar 39 for a 3 16 inch US made drill how do you like that I wonder where the heck that was bought Oh, look at that chisel. 
masonry drill bit. There you go. A whole box full of mishmash of drills. Just the heck of it. Let's see what. Just a couple of these have the names. Another one marked HS USA. HS. That one's even marked HS, even though it's a different style. You know, that's rusty, but it's still got a good edge on it. As is that one. Not bad. All right, let's get into something more interesting. So the first vendor that I hit, I hit him first thing in the morning because uh, I've been to his um, table set up before at this swap meet, and he generally brings in just truckloads of stuff and piles it all out all over tables in a big mess, and you have to dig through it. And he encourages people to take buckets that he has and fill the buckets up and then hit him with a, you know, have him get with you and he'll shoot you a price. And he's always very good on pricing. Um, almost always when I've added up in my head what I'm willing to pay for something and then wait to see what he says, he usually almost always comes in just about right about where I wanted to be or less. So I almost always uh, just, you know, say, yep, you get a deal. And I've gotten, I've scored some really good deals there. The last time I was there, I missed out on some deals. He had several machinist items. And um, there was somebody who was in front of me who happened to uh, scoop everything up. So I only saw the boxes and didn't even see what was in half the stuff. So this time I said, I'm going to try and get there a little earlier and see if I can't scoop something. And unfortunately... He really didn't have much for machinist items this time around. I did get a couple of things, and they're not fantastic, but for what I paid for them, um, you know, it all worked out in the end. So what I ended up doing was putting together this whole lot and um, ended up buying everything he had there and uh, putting it all in a pile and getting it all for, um, I think it was 80 bucks. And when you end up seeing all the stuff we're going to go through here you're going to see that i did i did i did fine you know i did pretty well um there were a couple items in here in, in particular that are really going to help pay for the rest of this that I'm, I'm going to probably resell them and pay for the rest of what i bought so well, the first machinist item i grabbed was this large vernier this is a um this is an 18 inch 46 centimeter vernier okay there's remnants of a sticker that was on here, so it looks like this may have already been a used by previously. But anyways, unfortunately, no case for it, um, and it's not um, a recognizable high-end name brand. It's actually a brand I had never heard of prior to looking it up, which is Canon, K-A-N-O-N. -N. So my first thought was, oh, okay, some kind of a cheap Chinese import um and it is an import but down this end in small print right there it actually says made in japan stainless so it's it's an import but it's actually better quality than like say some made in chinese shars you know el cheapo brand and on the back here it has what appears to be the original maybe sticker. It says tools, Canon. It actually it says digital caliper, which it's not. $59. So I'm I'm guessing that this is the original sticker that was on here when they were bought. So these were 59 bucks new for an 18 inch pair of verniers. That's crazy cheap. So that goes without saying. But um you know I'm I don't think these are going to have much resale value and they're going to be a pain in the butt to ship because they're so long and there's no case for them. So I think yeah, I'm probably just going to end up keeping these for myself. I'm sure it won't take much to get that sticker off of there, that sticker residue. Yep, those cleaned up nice. Just to give you an idea on the overall size of those things. Yeah, who knows? Maybe I will end up selling those. 
Um, I got a 24-inch uh, uh, pair of Fowler dial calipers, and then I've got a, I think it's a 48-inch pair of Starrett verniers. So I'm pretty much covered for those rare occasions when I'm going to want to measure something that long with that much precision. So the next pile here, this is all part of that same group, that same $80 um, buy, and actually this item also. So uh, there's a nice little depth gauge I rescued from being bent up and crushed in a pile of stuff. And this is a uh, Lufkin. It's actually in pretty decent shape. Not a lot of value there, but I mean, uh, no sense in letting it just go to waste. So this is a Lufkin number 510. I have already a couple of these, so it's not something I needed. I knew by adding it to the pile it wasn't going to make much of a difference price-wise on what I paid, so I figured I'd, I'd rescue it. The problem is I keep buying these, and I don't need them. I'm getting kind of... What's that one? That's a 444. General Tool Company, okay. So there's a General, Lufkin, and all right. Sorry, it looks like I only have three of these, unless I placed one somewhere by mistake. That's a Brown and Sharp. It's in a little rougher shape, but it's a it's a Brown and Sharp. Unfortunately, that's yeah, not in the greatest of shape. Anyways, yeah, I know they shouldn't all be just in here scratching each other up. But. Speaking of things I don't need and aren't really high value, but caught my eye and just threw it in the pile. This actually says uh, Lawson Products Incorporated Industrial Automotive Fasteners and Parts on the on the uh, cheese here. But what's in here is one of these little pocket um, pocket calipers, and this one is actually right on top here. It says the Executive Pocket Chum. C H U M chum, the executive pocket chum. So I thought that was kind of a neat little name for it. And uh, it says here car products, C A R products. Okay. On the back, it's got a little decimal equivalence chart. This is probably a nice little item you could just. This is something you could keep in the uh, keep in the glove box of your truck or something, and maybe when you're out somewhere and you realize, hey, I wish I had something to make a semi-precise measurement. <laughs> Anyways, I think I got a few of these too. Found this lowly little 5 8 gear wrench. And gear wrench is, I believe, a brand name that is sold through one of the big box stores, maybe. Um, I don't remember exactly. It's actually... Pretty decent quality, it seems, or it could be even, this could be Harbor Freight, I don't know. But it's a little stubby one. See how short that thing is? And I thought, oh, that's actually kind of a nice little handy thing to have. So I kept digging around, hoping I would find more of them and maybe put together like a set or something. And all I found was this one lowly one. And then when it came time to check out, I just totally forgot that it was still in there. I was like, oh, what the heck? So I'll just throw that in with my wrenches. This is one of the only actual really decent um machinist items that i got from this vendor and this is as the box suggests it's a Mitatoyo, and judging by the size you can probably tell that it is a micrometer but this is a a model 117-107 micrometer it is an anvil micrometer a, a, a i forgot what they call this i think it's a multiple anvil micrometer or whatever the heck they call it but essentially what it is, is this is a micrometer that's made so that you can actually change this anvil uh, to different ones. So right, what's in there right now is a little metal pin. And then I think originally it probably came with, oh, well, okay, all right, here we go. Here's one. What else is in there? Anything? Yeah, unfortunately all that I have is this one anvil. It probably goes there. And then I think there might have been multiple anvils there. I don't know exactly how many was supposed to come in the set. It looks brand new. I mean, it looks clean as a whistle. It was calibrated uh, back in 2015, 
Actually, I think it was due in 2015. Point is, I don't think it's seen much use at all. I haven't decided yet if I'm going to keep that. I can't, can't think of an application for it off the top of my head. These next two items are not big ticket items. Uh, they're for engine rebuilding. Uh, this is a Sunnen, S-U-N-N-E-N, brand valve spring compressing tool. All right. Uh, judging from the way it's made, it almost appears to me like maybe originally this might have been sold with additional shoes or uh, attachments here. This this piece right here looks like it's made to slide out of here. I think you have to pull this cotter pin and then it looks like maybe there might have been other ones you could put in there that had different sizes. All right. So this is like not a, you know, use this thing's only worth maybe like 10 bucks, but I knew that I was getting the stuff cheap, so I decided, well, when I can buy this style I don't think I already have one I kind of lose track of whether or not I bought something like that because it's not something you use all the time case in point I also scored this there was actually two of these in the box that I found this in uh, I decided to leave one and only take one this is a Zim manufacturing company of Chicago uh, made in the USA Zim Z-I-M and I actually may already have one of these, but I couldn't remember if maybe it was different than this one. So I decided to grab this one. So um, I'm going to start keeping all of these things together in the same location. That way I'll know where all of these engine rebuilding type um, specialty tools are. And maybe I could start remembering so I don't keep bringing these home. <laughs> Here's a nice bevel square uh, protractor. And it's a brown and sharp. So the, the bad news is it's been left out of its box, which is long gone for quite a while. And it's got some rust on it here and there. Um, but it is a genuine brown and sharp. So it's, you know, and the vial, in case you're wondering, is not broken. The little glass vial. So this could actually clean up and be a decent, uh, usable piece for somebody. I've got a few of these in the cases, you know, better condition than that. So this will probably be a cheap, you know, uh, a resale item, not for big money. But anyways, didn't want that to go and, you know, be wasted. This is a junky little um, device screwed to a board. Uh, these are often generically called helping hands they've got a couple of alligator clips mounted on these flexible arms that can be adjusted into different positions and then there's a magnifying glass this one's pretty dirty um, so the idea being is that you could actually have something really small being held by the magna you know being held by the arms and uh, use the magnifying glass to help aid seeing what you're doing now it occurred to me that something like this would have come in really handy for instance when I was like trying to solder a wire onto a terminal or something like that something small work like that so I had been thinking oh, it'd be nice if I had a pair of these and these were just sitting there and I knew again I knew I was gonna end up getting this for what would amount to a couple of bucks really and uh, so I threw that in the pile and this will be where the early bird gets the worm uh, you know, really, uh, that that old adage couldn't ring more truly. If I hadn't been there first thing in the morning, I guarantee you I wouldn't have been able to snag this. So I spotted this wrench set, combo wrench set, took one quick look, saw that it was snap-on, took a real quick look at it, rolled it right back up and put it in my bucket. And uh, I ended up getting this as part of the $80 deal. And what this is... This is a 14-piece snap-on combination wrench set, metric, okay? The only thing that's wrong with it is this wrench right here is, it is a snap-on.
This is a half inch snap on wrench that has been ground by somebody for some specific job. You can see that that's been ground thinner, almost to a point, and even this end, the closed end of the wrench, they ground it thinner. So somebody had a very specific job they needed to do on a regular basis. It must have been pretty important because they sacrificed this snap-on wrench to do it. And then somehow that made its way into, and look where what's missing from this set that where this was. The 10 millimeter wrench, probably the most popular size wrench in all of metric wrench history as far as it seems like every time I go to work on something, snowmobile, motorcycle, whatever, 10 millimeter is always a very popular uh, wrench. So if I get myself a snap on 10 inch, uh, 10 millimeter combo wrench to, to fill this missing void, um, this will be a complete set. And these sets trade regularly for well north of $100 on eBay because, again, it's flipping snap-on. Why am I not keeping it? Because I don't need snap-on quality tools for my shade tree mechanic in that I do around here. This is just money that's going to be tied up in my toolbox that I can put to better foolish use. So pretty decent score for 80 bucks. Well, you haven't heard the, the, the best part. The best part is I'm not done. I got three more items here <laughs> that were included in this deal. Uh, one of which is just this empty box. This is, a, this is a Milwaukee, I'm pretty sure it's a Milwaukee Sawzall box. And um, yeah, 60, yeah, Super Sawzall kit, 15 amp, 6538-21. It doesn't have any cracks in it. Locks are good. I mean, the box is actually in excellent shape, but there's nothing in there. It's just an empty box. And you might ask, well, Steve, what the hell good is an empty box? Well, I'll tell you what good it is. I own two Milwaukee Sawzalls, and I, I've used both of them, you know, on more than one occasion. So it's not like it's a waste to have two. It's always nice to have a, a spare in case something goes wrong or for whatever reason. But one of them I bought used, and it has no case. So that's a good reason to, to score a used case. This is the other one that I own, and this is exactly what it looked like when I bought it. This case is horrible. It's an original metal Sawzall case. It's so rotted that the hinge has completely given away and separated from the lid. So this is just a complete piece of garbage. And there's my, my lowly sawzall in there. Okay, so it's not perfect. I don't really like that. I mean, I'm going to have to take the cord and the blade off to fit, to fit this sawzall in this case. But it's certainly better than having no case at all for this one. And you know, you can imagine my uh, my surprise when I when I first saw this case. My first thought was, well, all right, I know that that's a sawzall case. I don't need another sawzall. But then when I picked it up and found it was empty, I was like, oh, that's what I like, because I knew I could get this for for dirt cheap. And and, and the reality is, when he was tallying up all the stuff and going through it to to, to come to the eighty dollar price. When he got to this case and saw it was an empty case, he said, well, all right, you can have that. So he was basically telling me, this is zero dollars because you're buying the other stuff from me. So I'm happy about that. He had several large C-clamps sitting there. And this is the only one I, I, I decided to take. Um, this is, well, this says it's a 112 Jorgensen. Jorgensen is a good brand name of um, uh, wood clamps, I know, so I recognize that name. Um, the reason why I didn't take the other ones was because they were all butchered in one way or another. A lot of them had things welded onto them that shouldn't have been there. And even this one doesn't seem quite right to me because there's a, there's a nut on here. I can't see what's holding that nut on there. But this doesn't spin independently of this. 
In other words, I would have expected there to be a cup here, so I don't even know what the deal is with that. But I, I like the size. It's a shallow throat, okay, but very long this way. So I knew I was going to get that cheap, so I put that in the pile. All right, so another item that I scored early on, I, I saw this sitting on the table and I asked him what it was because my first thought was I thought it was an old film strip projector from back in the days when I was in grade school. And he said, no, he said, it's a it's an old builder's transit. The case is cracked right here, but, you know, it's a... I looked at it, I said, okay, yeah, I recognize that name, David White Instruments. And I'm not a, I'm not a person who deals in surveying or anything, but I had... On more than one occasion, toyed with the idea of maybe picking one of these up. Um, you know, they're, the guys today, they're going to use their laser levels and do a lot of this stuff uh, with high-tech gadgetry. Um, but back in the day, you would use something like this when you were, say, laying out a foundation to make sure it was square and also calculating elevations. So... This, isn't this pretty? Take a look at what a nice, nicely made piece of equipment this is. This is, this is all brass, these pieces. All these little knobs are brass. Even the eyepiece. Okay. It's got a little storage spot for the plumb bomb. And that appears to probably be the original plumb bomb. I'm not sure what may or may not be missing from this here. This is a plastic like cup to hold something. But uh this is this is kind of a neat thing. So it's got almost like a ratcheting effect. There must be a way to release this. Or do you just go all the way around? I don't know. Alright, so Here's the tail of the tape. This is a David White. It actually says manufactured by Realist Inc. of Menomone Falls, Wisconsin. I think I'm saying that right. Menomone. Menomone Falls, Wisconsin. This is a model 8300. David White. So when I first walked up and I asked him, I said, well, what are you going to get for that? He wanted 40 bucks for it. And I didn't say yes, so he's like, well, you tell me. And then he walked off to help some other people, and I uh, said, well, you know, I'm going to get more stuff. So I took it and put it in my pile. And then we ended up doing the deal for 80 So I'm thinking this should have been maybe like 30 And that means all that other stuff we just went through was 50 bucks, which is fantastic. A fantastic deal. So I, I, I started the day off with a positive mental attitude. <laughs> uh, now looking online, eBay, the last couple of the, there's one on there right now, starting bid of 59 bucks, doesn't have a crack in the case probably either. So, and previous sales, found one on eBay. Again, looks like it's probably doesn't have a crack in the case. Sold for 59 bucks and another 30 bucks shipping. So, what I'm getting at here is that with, because of the damage to the case, this is probably like a 40 or $50 item, unfortunately. It's just not that valuable, you know. Uh, but, hey, maybe I'll be able to use it and have some fun with it. I asked him about the tripod, and he said, nah, he said didn't have the tripod with it. But then as he started unpacking more and more stuff, lo and behold, we come across this tripod. So I'm not going to bother setting it up, but what we have here is a CST slash burger, B-E-R-G-E-R -E -E tripod. This is a tripod for a much more um, modern uh, transit or maybe even a theodolite or a station. I don't know. Uh, it's got this brass connector here threaded piece with a knob to thread into the base of whatever was supposed to be on here okay it's got the uh the i don't know what you call this thing but the the long telescopic um ruler type of device that the other gentleman would stand in the distance holding up 
Um, it's got some damage. It looks like it was dropped or bent or something here. So we've got some bends in it. All right. But that was included in the deal. So, you know, if I really want to use this transit, I'm sure I could probably make an adapter plate to get that to sit on there. So that's my little foray into uh, <laughs> the world of surveying. Well, <laughs> not really surveying, but... And that's the other thing, too. I was thinking, I wonder if I could use this to actually lay out lot lines. I mean, I know it's not... It's, it's not... That's not what it's originally designed to do. But, I mean, realistically, it does have... Um, you know, it does have a, a an angle readout here. So, I might be able to actually do that. Find some... Maybe find some lot lines that I haven't seen in a long time. Oh, gee whiz. It might be a little trickier than I thought trying to mount this on that tripod. I was just trying to figure out how this uh, comes off of here. And it turns out this is actually part of the base of the, the whole uh, unit. And it actually screws in for storage. It screws onto this base. Like so. Check this out. <laughs> Look at that. So this gray right here uh, is actually, this gray piece is actually brass. So it looks like a lot of this might be solid brass. So apparently, this is probably a safety cord maybe to keep this from, when you unscrew it, if you fumble to keep you from accidentally dropping it, I don't know. Oh, no, no, no. That, oh, that, that's what the, um, the plumb bob must hook onto this. That's what, I bet you that's what the plumb bomb hooks onto. Okay. Um, point is, to mount this on the tripod, you must have to have a piece that is has male threads on it like this base and attaches to the tripod. Or the tripod itself maybe had the top like that. Maybe there was a special tripod that came with this. I don't know. It's not that I couldn't make one. It's just that it's not going to be... Not going to be a walk in the park. It's not going to be a simple matter of just having a, a, you know, like a circular plate that I drill holes in to make an adapter plate. This is going to be a little more, <clears throat> a little more involved. That caution down there it talks about how to lock this thing when you're when you're storing it. And interestingly enough, apparently these two levers right here are locking levers. So you flip these. Um, like so, that releases this and allows this to do this. Pretty cool, huh? Yeah, anyways. Nice precision optical instrument, kind of neat. You know, I don't know if I'll ever get to use it. Maybe I should. Maybe I should sell it, I don't know.